welcome guests. Sorry about the delay. Um, welcome to the HUD seminar. My name is uh, Dr. Abdul Samad Khan, and uh, today we're going to be having a health seminar. It's not the uh, most interesting topic for uh, a HUD seminar, but I personally think it's very important, uh, inshallah. So um, I'd like to share my screen. Let's see. I think you guys can all see this uh, PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> so inshallah, today we're gonna have just a insight regarding, you know, some, I would say rather mundane uh, things regarding Hajj, but it's, it's very, very important uh, that we, you know, uh, come, come, come understand this on a holistic level, right? Uh, we all want a uh, Hajj Mabrur. And Hajj Mabrur is an accepted Hajj. And, uh, you know, that mean, there's a few criteria that go with that, right? There's uh, the famous hadith of the Prophet said, it says that if you uh, complete your Hajj and don't commit, uh, you know, these sins, then you are returned like a newborn baby. Um, but the criteria with that is that you don't commit, you know, some really important and vital sins throughout uh, this this kind of journey of ours that we're going to be going through together, inshallah. And, um, you know, to do that, we need uh, a few things. We need our physical health to be intact, uh, you know, which, which then enables our uh, psychological and our mental health uh, to be, uh, you know, functioning well. So that we're aware, you know, that we shouldn't be sitting, we shouldn't be arguing, we shouldn't be fighting with each other, we shouldn't be doing things that we, you know, that we're not supposed to do, so that we do have an accepted hutch. Um, and so, you know, part of the, you know, the whole seminar, you know, we have to understand that all of these, you know, things that we're going to be going over right now really go into having an accepted hutch. So, inshallah, let's get started. Um, Obviously, we are uh, in uh, Legacy Institute and uh, strategic partners with El Bait guests, inshallah. So looking forward to uh, meeting with the El Bait team, inshallah, when we get uh, to our destination in Mecca and Medina, inshallah. So this is in regards to medical advice uh, and uh, Q&A. Uh, is Dr. B on? I don't know if he's on or not, but uh, hopefully he is, inshallah. Uh, so to start with some required vaccines, the only required vaccine that we need is the meningitis vaccine. This is vital that we get this, and this has to be done documented 10 days prior uh, to our departure, or I'm sorry, our arrival, at least 10 days prior to our arrival. So if, we didn't have, have, if you have not gotten a meningitis vaccine, we'll be answering questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, I'm not ignoring you. Um, it's just that we just need to get through the presentation and then inshallah we will uh, answer the question. Um, there's two types of this meningitis vaccine. Either one is acceptable. Um, uh, the quadrivalent conjugated vaccine, the only difference is that it's la it lasts five years. Um, and, it's, and that's the one you have to get within five years. Uh, the other one um, is a three-year one. Uh, so make sure you have documented proof of this vaccine. You will be, uh, it's almost guaranteed they will ask you right as soon as you land for the paper, um, documenting that you got this meningitis vaccine. Um, the other vaccines are not required. Uh, polio, yellow fever, uh, that is not required. Uh, so flu, flu vaccine and pneumococcal vaccine, those are recommended vaccines. Um, anybody who has any chronic uh, illnesses like cancer, diabetes, anybody over the age of 65 uh, should consider getting these vaccines, um, especially uh, uh, you know, 
if you know if you've had pneumonia in the past, pneumococcal vaccine is really important. Uh, the flu vaccine, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if they're going to have, uh, if, if the doctors have this year's flu vaccine out yet, but uh, inshallah, um, even taking last year's vaccine would, would definitely help as well. And uh, again, uh, you know, this is important that you have a, uh, a record of your uh, medical history and your vaccines on your persons, like a physical record, um, just in case things get lost or, you know, uh, you know, you're not aware of certain things, at least you have these things that are documented. Sure. These are also recommended vaccines, uh, like uh, tetanus, diphtheria, polio. So certain health risks uh, related to Hajj, we're very aware of there's going to be crowding going on. Um, you can't get, get away from that. We're going to be around each other, like very, very close proximity. And our bodies are not going to, are, are not used to the you know type of infections that other people from around the world will be carrying. Um, so it's important that we keep our immune system elevated. Uh, and that starts now. That starts, you know, uh, uh, where you are in your homes, uh, how you're eating, uh, how you're exercising, how you're sleeping. Um, you know, these are all ways of building your immune system. Uh, eating, you know, you know, taking, you know, multivitamins if you're not getting enough in your diet. Um, you know, these are all, you know, aspects to making sure that, you know, you don't want to end up getting sick. It's going to happen. People are going to get sick when they do come, when they come to Mecca and Medina. Uh, but, you know, you, you want to try to prevent these things uh, as much as possible. Um, health risk, the weather. This is one of the hottest seasons. Uh, it's probably going to be, if not the hottest, one of the hottest environments uh, that you guys have ever been in. Um, and you will be walking many, many, many miles uh, in this weather. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about ways of uh, you know, counter, counterbalancing these things. But be aware, you know, sunburn, dehydration, heat, exhaustion, and strokes are all possibilities. Uh, one year I went for a hajj. I, I got uh, heat exhaustion uh, uh, severe, where I was almost delirious. Uh, it was very, very, very hot. So uh, it's definitely something that uh, we have to be aware of. Um, accidents and injuries, right? I mean, we, throughout the journey, we have to be conscious that there's going to be things that are going to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, expect the unexpected, right? Uh, you're going to have issues. Things are going to happen. You might trip. You might fall down. There's multiple ways of taking these things. Um, when we talk about mental health, uh, it's going to be important that we don't, you know, get ourselves dejected and start saying, oh, why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? And then that'll be, build up your anger. And the one thing will lead to the next. Again, we want, all want a hajj mabrur. We want an accepted hajj. Uh Food, water contamination, uh, diarrhea is definitely a possibility. Insect bites, uh, infections, for example. <clears throat> Upper respiratory, GI infections. Um, you know, these are all you know, likelihood of being there is, is definitely strong. So let's talk about some fatigue and dehydration, right? So... Um, some common uh, causes uh, of, of you know fatigue and dehydration. So just being out in this 120, you know, 115, 120 degree heat, uh, it's already you know close to 110 degrees in Mecca and Medina. Uh, so uh, you know, understand that you know excessive sweating uh, can cause fatigue and dehydration. Um, going to the bathroom. Uh, excessive urination, so somebody who has diabetes, for example, um, vomiting, diarrhea, fever. So if you get sick, there's a chance you're getting uh, fatigue and dehydration. Um, some of the symptoms, so you will start off with having dry mouth, lips, um, heart rate will go up, your urine will be quite dark, you'll be feeling very tired, you might have some nausea, vomiting, and obviously you'll have a severe thirst. Um, 
here are some of the uh, distances that we, you know, will be will be moving, and some of these you'll be walking. Um, uh, you know, I, and I know we have trains and buses and things like that now, but there's a lot of people that end up, you know, for, for some odd reason having to walk some of these uh, distances, uh, especially uh, in Mina. You know, if you're at one of the camps that's a little bit further away from Jamarat, um, you you're gonna be walking quite quite a few, you know, quite a few miles there. Um, so ways of counterbalancing these, uh, start walking now. Uh, you know, that is, I would say, probably the most important thing that you can do, um, if, you know, in terms of your physical health is start walking. Um, and you don't have to start walking you know, 10 miles a day, uh, even, you know, half a mile, uh, you know, to a mile of, of walk. And if you can walk on an incline, that would be uh, a lot better. Uh, uh, you know, because uh, Mecca, you know, does have um, some some slopes and, uh, you know, it'd be important for you. I can't tell you enough how important it is to, even if you just start walking a quarter mile or half a mile every day, uh, the difference in uh, your ability to complete these tasks uh, without, uh, you know, having issues. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, people who, who cannot complete Hajj, you know, who have to, you know, either do a wheelchair, um, you know, who, who are very, very disturbed, you know, and these are people that, you know, unfortunately didn't take the time uh, to uh, you know, do this uh, prep. So please start walking from t today or tomorrow onwards. Uh, you know, it can be inside, it can be outdoors. Uh, but as long as we're walking, you're getting a heart rate elevated and doing that, you know, half a mile, if you can walk up to a mile, you don't have to walk that much, but uh, it's important to try to get that, those walks in. Um, bringing uh, electrolytes, fluids, emergency, these are all things that we're going to mention in, in a few minutes. Um, uh, and then avoid uh, and decrease your heat. So using an umbrella, uh, it's very, very important that we... Uh, that we, uh, you know, carry an umbrella with us. You can get one in Mecca and Medina um, pretty easily or just bring one with you. Uh, spray fans, I mean, a lot of people have these. Um, you know, try to be in shade as much as you can. Uh, you know, your ihram should be light. Uh, you know, nothing like polyester in nature. Um, and your tobes and other clothing should be light as well. Drink lots of zamzam. Zumzum uh, is full of uh, you know different electrolyte. Uh, you know it has some of its characteristics are that it has electrolytes in it. Uh, so alhamdulillah, it's uh, a natural way of avoiding dehydration. Um, here are some of the distances here. Uh, so they are, you know, significant. Uh, I've walked uh, from Jamarat to Arfat. Uh, and that was um, two years ago and in the heat. Um, and that's, that was difficult, uh, a very, very difficult task. But, uh, you know, you can do it, right? There's people that do it every year. You'll see, you know, thousands of people walking, you know, when we're on the train. Um, they'll be walking from Mina to Arafat and then back to Zalifa. So there's some of the best moments of, I'm not telling you, to do this, but uh, it's some of the best moments of, of you know, most people's Hajj experiences is, you know, having that solitude and, and walking and staying in the bay, you know, I am here, Allah, I'm at your home, um, you know, for, for hours on end. So, you know, you can look at these later on, but these are some distances here. Um, the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke, this is very important to know the differences, right? So we talk about heat exhaustion, you have Nausea, vomiting, feel faint and dizzy, uh, excessive sweating, clammy skin, muscle cramping, nausea, vomiting. Um, these are all signs that you could potentially be having something called heat stroke. Um, now, heat stroke is a medical emergency. It's uh, it's very important that uh, we you know understand that you know the differences. So, heat stroke is when you start feeling confused. You start having um, you know your you know. There, your people around you, you know, think that you might be having a stroke because, you know, you start mumbling your words or you start talking about things that aren't important. Um, uh, you don't sweat. 
So you dry out enough and you stop sweating. Uh, your temperature is above 40 degrees Celsius. Hot, dry skin. You also have nausea and vomiting. Um, you may lose consciousness or experience convulsions and seizures. This is, uh, you know, a medical emergency. And uh, we have to be aware that we need to call um, uh, here. Uh, we will give you the medical emergency numbers. Um, uh, but, you know, this is 911 is for here, uh, not in Mecca and Medina. But uh, you have to, you know, get emergency personnel right away uh, because it could be fatal in nature. <clears throat> so, again, we talked about uh, uh, heat exhaustion and ways to avoid it. Um, use light colored, you know, umbrellas, for example. Um, and, uh, you know, wear, wear light colored clothes. Ensure adequate fluid intake. Make sure you take... Um, they have liquid IV uh, in packets. You know, make sure you take those with you. Bring those with you and put them in your water bottles. Uh, it's definitely going to help. Take breaks and rest. Um, you know, uh, when when there's a lot of there's people that you're gonna people are gonna pass out. Um, and a lot of times it's not you know you know the old or the weak. Um, it's young healthy people, and it happens because oh they think you know I, I'm healthy. I don't need to take any rest. Um, they don't look out for the signs and boom, you know, when you're when they're waiting for the train for a few hours, um, waiting for the train after Arafat to being out in the sun all day, um, you know, they just collapse. Uh, and uh, so it's important to know, you know, it's, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to sit down. You know, nobody's going to say anything to you. Um, try to avoid direct exposure to the sun as much as you can, uh, you know, uh, but know that, you know, on the day of Arafat, the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't have that shade. He stood out from Dohar all the way to Maghrib in the sun, making dua to Allah. <clears throat> so uh, the other, some of the other things are that you can do, remove out of clothing if you, you know, if you're, if you're suspecting heat stroke. So if somebody's suspecting heat stroke, uh, remove their outer clothing immediately. Um, you know, use cool water on their body. Uh, you know, try to get ice as much as possible. Uh, you know, move that person to a cool place. Um, you know, fan them, expose them to some uh, source of air, and then may, uh, you know get get them water, obviously, and then call emergency personnel. Inshallah, pregnancy and hajj. Um, so these are some issues, and I think you know. Many of the women have already talked to their OB guy regarding this, but you know, if there's definitely risks to the baby, then you know, postponing Hajj uh, is is definitely uh, an option that we probably want you to take a look at. Um, you know, these are people that have already had uh, already known risk factors. Um, you know, di diabetes. You know, they have. You know, it, it's an arduous journey. It's not that easy of a journey. So. Um, you know, be, being pregnant does not mean that you shouldn't go to Hajj. It's not, that's not the case. But if you're having uh, quite a few risk factors, then you should definitely talk to your uh, OBGYN regarding these, these, you know, these concerns. Uh, you know, bleeding in pregnancy, diabetes, preeclampsia. Make sure you talk to your uh, OBGYN regarding all of these things um, if you're a high-risk pregnancy. Uh, we we did a, a, a heart seminar for, for women um, and I think that's recorded uh, regarding, uh, we went specifically into like uh, preventing your menstrual periods. Um, you know, just to go over it briefly again, uh, again, discuss with your OBGYN, uh, consider, uh, again, consider oral contraceptives, uh, you know, to help uh, prevent menstrual bleeding um, during this time. And again, there's a whole lengthy seminar uh, that we did uh, last week regarding this. Um, there are side effects to these OCPs, oral contraceptives, such as nausea, vomiting, headaches, um, you know, breast tenderness, mood swings, emotional, and being irritable. I mean, these are all aspects that we have to be conscious about. Uh, that you know, the heat can make us irritable. The, the walking, the crowds, um, uh, you know, certain people, uh, medications can make make us irritable, right? So. Um, NSAIDs, so Motrin, for example, that does help reduce bleeding in menstrual periods and as well as uh, menstrual pain as well. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> so these are uh, kind of counter, it's not recommended to take uh, birth controls if you have some of these conditions. So for example, if you have high blood pressure, heart, liver, kidney disease, um, if you have severe migraines, uh, if you have blood clots, again, you're gonna be taking these for a short amount of time, uh, not necessarily going to be you know high risk for these. But again, you should, if you have a history of this or if you have a family history of this, or if you've had these issues in the past, but, um, make sure that you do speak to uh, your uh, primary care doctor or your OBGYN. Um, uh, if you're 35 years or older and uh, you guys smoke, vaping, use hookah, <clears throat> and uh, if you had a baby recently, your elevated risk for blood, blood clots as well, history of cancer. Um, there's multiple different types. Again, you've gone through this before. I don't want to kind of harp on this. If, you, if you're really interested, we can, you can go through uh, the old slides. Um, there's a combined option uh, of OC, uh, estrogen, progesterone. There's a 28-day pack, which normally comes, uh, you know, you have, uh, it's, it's in a pack. There's 21 pills, and then there's like uh, seven that are usually white, um, you know, and if you want to delay your period, you don't take those seven, uh, which enable bleeding. You kind of just move on to the next 28-day pack straight, uh, and that'll keep you from bleeding. Um, but again, we discussed that in an earlier, like last week, I think, um, for the women. So you can go back and watch that as well. Um, these these type of uh, contraceptives, you must start like now. If you're going to start them. Um, one or two months prior to Hajj for better results. So make sure you talk to your OBGYN regarding these things. Uh, progesterone only. Uh, again, this these are uh, pills. They're not really recommended because you do have breakthrough bleeding with these uh, as regular as well as irregular periods uh, and mood swings. This one, NET. Uh, this is a five milligram tablet. So you can take this starting uh, like five days. Uh, uh, we recommend five days. It, it can be as less as low as three days, but five days prior to you coming, uh, you can start taking this to prevent your, your periods. Um, this is a three times a day. They'll make sure people take it twice, one time, and then all of a sudden they have bleeding and they're like, oh, why is this happening? Because the half-life is very short. So, um, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, it's, you know, you, you delay the bleeding, you have to take this three times a day. Uh, these are safer than regular birth control pills. They don't increase risk of blood clots, uh, especially when you're traveling long distance in hot weather. Uh, so these are, you know, I, I would say the go-to pills to ask your uh, primary care or your OBGYN. What can be done about breakthrough bleeding? Um, so again, this can happen. Uh, it happens every year. Uh, There's women that, that, you know, fortunately, you know, because of the stress, because of, you know, uh, just the way our bodies are designed, uh, breakthrough bleeding does happen. Some things that you can do, um, you know, again, stay on schedule. You know, missing a pill makes you more likely to have breakthrough bleeding. Um, track your breakthrough bleeding on a calendar as well. So common uh, common conditions and illnesses. Uh, admin, if, if you can let me know if, if I'm going over time or if there's issues or whatever, inshallah, because I'm just kind of going through this. Um, common conditions. So... Respiratory infections, Hudge cough, very, 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 very common. Um, this is going to be, you know, a lot worse than your normal cough and cold. Uh, it lasts a lot longer. It's more severe. Um, knocks you out for, for a lot longer. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, develop this and carry it forward. You know, that's why they call it the Hudge cough. When people come back from, uh, you know, Hudge, you know, they, they have this cough. And so... Um, it's named a dubbed the Hodge cough. GI issues. Um, 
very common. Again, uh, you know, the weather is hot, uh, the food sometimes, just be aware sometimes, you know, if you're in uh, Arafat or you're in Mina, you're in Mina camps, you know, sometimes the food can be spoiled. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it, it can happen. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't take the risk of like just getting food off the streets or just taking it from somebody else. Um, you know, uh, kind of stick to, uh, you know, the groups and uh, the, you know, the way we're eating and, and where we're eating from, inshallah, and, and you should be okay. Uh, food poisoning, diarrhea, you can have sunburn, dryness is there. Okay, I need to wrap up soon. So I will uh, kind of go through this quickly. Um, inshallah, if we need to, we can have another seminar. You guys are all seminared out, but inshallah, we'll try to go through this as much as possible. Um, documentation is very important to have documentation. So if you have any chronic diseases, uh, if you have any major health concerns, make sure you have a uh, document because if something happens to you, uh, you know, it's really important that people can get you the help you need uh, right away. Um, make sure you take your medications and hand care. Don't check your bags. Don't check it in. Don't put in your check bags. There's so many bags. The chance of your check bag getting lost is, is there. Um, and so make sure that you have it on person. Um, make sure if you're, you know, you have these issues that you have documentation. Um, and then you give that documentation to somebody that you know that you're, that you're close to, right? Uh, if you have any of these these conditions, uh, make sure you get uh, documentation from your PCP regarding, uh, you know, the issues, potentially the, their phone number, the hospital phone number that you go to, uh, just in case we need to get a hold of somebody. Make sure you bring your, you know, your medications with you, uh, blood pressure medications. If you need a blood pressure cuff to monitor, make sure you bring that as well. Um, heart, you know, these are all medications that if you have, uh, make sure you bring your medications with you. It's very important. Eat in moderation, please. Try to eat in moderation. Uh, for diabetics, you know, bring a glucometer, uh, you know, uh, adjust medications based on how you're eating. Um, protect your feet, in your, especially, you know, the people that have neuropathy. Protect your feet is really, really important. Um, you know, uh, you know, getting getting sand in your in your uh, in your shoes or your uh, sandals can cause irritation and, and blistering. If you're a diabetic, it can lead to really bad infections. So make sure that you're cleaning your 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 sandals out as much as you can. Uh, these are all chronic diseases. You know, just be aware if you have any of these chronic diseases. Make sure you bring your medication. It's really important. It's really it's a lot easier to prevent these these issues from happening than trying to take care of them and treat them while you're there. And then, oh, my, oh I forgot my inhaler. I forgot uh, my nebulizer. And then, you know, we have to scramble to find these things for you. So. Again, chronic disease management, bring your medications. Things, some things that can happen during Hajj and Umrah, uh, leg swelling. You can be standing, walking long distances. Uh, you know, bring aspirin, bring Lasix if, if it's something, you know, if you have, you know, CHF. Uh, if you're used, if you're prone to leg swelling and edema, make sure you talk to your doctor about these things. Compression stocks uh, are really important. Uh, avoid salt intake. Um, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you develop these symptoms and you can't walk, right? Again, if you have these, these other diseases, uh, you, know, you know, if you're on dialysis, make sure you get this arranged beforehand. Uh, there are, you know, uh, systems in place to help you with these things, but you have to let us know beforehand, inshallah. Bladder issues. Yeah, we're not, you know, if you're a smoker, please try to stop. The worst thing you want to do is like smoking and, and these type of things during Hajj. Uh, it happens, people do it all the time, but you know, if you could stop, please, you know, try to stop. Anxiety is really important. How much time do we have left? I want to talk about 
So Vaseline is really important for men. Uh, chafing is a serious, serious thing uh, with your thighs rubbing against each other, you know, and putting Vaseline in your inner thighs will help prevent that. Uh, please, please, please bring vas non-scented Vaseline. Unscented soap wipes, start walking now. Um, uh, conditioning, physical preparedness, mental health. It's really, really important to have a positive, positive mindset. Um, you know, ex expect things to go, you know, all right, it's going to happen. Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, from now, if there's, you know, you, certain things that, you know, that you know get to you. Um, Dr. Bukhara, you're, you're here. Please chime in if you can. Assalamualaikum. No, you're doing, you're doing such a great job. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, sorry. I have you on. I couldn't hear you before. I don't know. I didn't even know if you were speaking, uh, man. I'm sorry about that. No, no, I say you're doing such a great job, man. <laughs> no, no, no. You go, you go. You start, man. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry. So, no, no, you're good. So start walking now, obviously, as Dr. Uh, Samad is saying, and keep going. Uh, I don't have access to the... Uh, you can just keep running through it. Just keep running through it. No, you go ahead, man. But, Dr. Samad, can you keep going through the slides? Okay, all right, sorry. Turn this off, please. Um... So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, get, and like we said, get comfortable shoes uh, and sandals, especially waterproof, because it can smell it up if it absorbs that uh, water. Antihistamines, again, this is just some pro tips and gems that we, we have tried that helped, you know, especially if you have bladder issues. Uh, if you take antihistamine, it can help. Wash your hands regularly, change your clothes frequently. And what what this means is that, you know, when you you should have a pair of clothes when you're not in Ihram uh, for the hotel and then have a pair of clothes uh, that you can have when you go outside of the hotel because you will attach germs to your clothing. So if you're able to have one pair of clothes in the hotel that you change into when you're there and then one pair of clothes outside of the hotel that can help decrease a lot of that hudge cough and a lot of that sicknesses. When you're ihram, you can't do much. You know, you just have to pray and you have to try to do your best to avoid uh, getting into situations where it may cause you uh, medical problems. What about alcohol sanitizers? There's a difference of opinion about using alcohol sanitizer. As long as it's unscented, that's, uh, that's okay. And then like <laughs> we mentioned this last time, I don't know, I think I was at the HUD seminar and one time I was in Tawaf and my glasses, literally, because it's so crowded, I got bumped and it flew off and I broke my glasses. And I was literally, I'm, I'm pretty blind, uh, alhamdulillah. So I could not see. I had no extra pair of glasses and I was struggling. I was struggling to find uh, a place where you can get glasses or contacts. So finally, it was expensive too. So finally, I got some brother. He hooked me up with a, a pair of contacts uh, for a small amount of price. And then I just wore those the whole time. So that wasn't good. It's good, man. Mostly. So uh, avoid uh, coughing. So this is another thing, part of, uh, you know, one of the things that you guys are going to notice is that when you're at Hajj or Umrah, most of the people that come there, are elderly, uh, f sometimes frail. They've this is their first time going. They've been saving up for years, you know, and they come from places where the education level may not be uh, as high or as much compared to where your guys are coming from. So they don't have these rules. They don't have this idea. They don't have, you know, a sense of you know hygiene at times. You know what things can spread. What 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 should you do not to do. So when you are there. You know, covering yourself when you're sneezing, covering your mouth, you know, uh, throwing garbage away, you know, uh, these things will help eliminate uh, infections. Um, you know, wearing a mask, if you are very uh, prone to getting sick, if you have immunocompromised diseases or states, wearing a mask, obviously we, we at Legacy have an opinion that uh, there will be a small penalty for it. Uh, uh, disposing the uh, garbage properly, you're going to see that not people, not not a lot of people practice this. 
And the part of that is we're going to have to be patient, but all the, at the same time, let us not spread the germs and, and whatnot. So next slide. Keep food away from uh, uh, getting spoiled, uh, washing your hands thoroughly, um, fruits and vegetables, eating them before they get spoiled, uh, not having contaminated food in the a hotel and whatnot. That'll help also, you know, especially from the GI bugs, you know, you can get diarrhea real quick. So what medications do you want to bring? Um, you have here a great Lua for those that are in the Western states. Uh, and I don't know about UK, Canada, if you guys have these brands or not, but a uh, paracetamol or a, uh, Tylenol, Motrin, ibuprofen, that'll help for inflammation, pain, Alka-Seltzer if you have gas issues or anti-acid medications. If you're worried about getting diarrhea or you have irritable bowel syndrome, Imodium or Pepto-Bismol, if you get, if you're a person who gets really sick with sinus infections and allergy, Sudafed and anti-allergy medications, if you're a person that gets dehydrated really quickly, you want to bring electrolytes with you. Um, if you are a person who gets um, <clears throat> uh, fevers or chills or has autoimmune issues, you want to bring Tylenol with you. So it's all going to be symptomatic care. You know what you have and you know what medicines you may need. So you want to try to bring those just in case. Uh, I, at the seminar, a lot of people were asking about what antibiotics to bring. Uh, you know, we recommend uh, any antibiotic that uh, can cover multiple things and is safe. So z pack is a good one. You know, it can help with upper respiratory infections, the cough. It can help with even the GI symptoms. Same with doxycycline. Uh, we use doxycycline a lot in acne. You might hear it if you have kids who have acne. We use that. Uh, it's a it's it's a it's a good, great medication that's uh, wide spectrum. Bactrim, Cipro, Flagyl, these are great for GI issues as well. And then if steroids are always great if you have issues, especially uh, upper respiratory or asthma or bronchitis. Um, Zofran is great if you have. Uh, you know, nausea and vomiting, or you get motion sickness. You know, when you're traveling, you get sick. Claritin is for allergies. Benadryl is always great to have. Uh, it does make you a little drowsy. Cortisone cream, if you're easily, if you easily get burned or you get skin issues or you have very sensitive skin. And then, like we said, pain medications. You need to go to the healthcare center immediately and seek medical help when you feel any chest pain, OK, and especially if you have risk factors like high blood pressure, you smoked in the past or you have a strong family history. Um, if you're having pain, especially in the chest that's radiating into your arms, your jaw, your back, and it's unusual, you, you don't have an explanation for it. Uh, if you're having any shortness of breath uh, and you're becoming uh, really low in oxygen where you're getting fatigued, tired and pale, dizziness or unbalanced, stroke like symptoms, if you're excessively sweating and getting dehydrated, these are things that you want to uh, let your group leader know right away and uh, uh, seek immediate medical attention. Next slide, Dr. Song. Yeah. For health inquiries, you can dial 937. Um, the after Hajj Blues, you can just, alhamdulillah, we put the slide up. It'll be in the recording. Uh, it, it does happen. We, we call them post Hajj Blues. You know, a lot of people go through it. All of us go through it. And here are some medicines that can help. Next slide. Any questions? Um, <clears throat> we did have uh, some slides uh, that talked about uh, children. And we do have some hadiths and Quran and uh, ayat that talk about some of the sunnah health, if if you want to just go over it so it can be in the recording. Uh, one, we know in Islam, at-tahar shatr iman like, you know, cleanliness is important in Islam, you know. Uh, oh, miswak, this, this question came up. You know, miswak is beautiful. Miswak, there's a difference between the package miswaks and there's a difference between uh, the actual miswak stick. Uh, that you can get that's fresh. It really helps, freshens your mouth, and Allah loves it, and uh, it increases the reward of your ibadah. 
Uh, and this is something that you should consider, especially because of the scent, uh, you know, in the Hanafi Madhab, you know, the scent of the toothpaste uh, can be an issue for some people. We don't have that opinion, but, you know, that's something to consider. Uh, when it comes to the fitra of man uh, and woman, you know, uh, before we go, you want to clean yourself, cut your nails, you know, and, and be presentable. Uh, diet, uh, you know, you want to eat in moderation, like we've mentioned multiple times. And then not being excessive in when it comes to food uh, and wasting. You know, you'll see a lot of people take a lot on their plate uh, because they get so overwhelmed and there's so many options. And then they end up wasting. And that's like counterintuitive. You're coming here for the sake of Allah and Allah commands us not to be excessive and not to be wasteful. Zamzam, as, Sheikh, uh, as Dr. Samad mentioned, Zamzam is ma'u uh, zamzam, uh, zamzam lima shuri balahu. So if you have health issues, there are miracles that we have heard and we have seen. You know, people drinking zamzam and getting cured from many diseases, many illnesses. This is the time to do it. It's the best water on the earth. It's it's a water that's from Jannah. There's so many ahadiths we can talk about it. But zamzam is a blessed water, and the Prophet sallam used to love drinking zamzam it's the only thing that we find in sunnah uh, one can uh, one can say it's the only thing that he ever requested someone to bring back for him when he was in Medina al munawwar zamzam and so uh, if you have and like sheikh uh, samad said that uh, zamzam has so many electrolytes you know one of the miracles of zamzam you know this whole fab that you have now with ph uh, basic water well zamzam is very basic it's like a ph of uh, 10 or 11 and you can just find how many things that are acidic in our life and cause medical problems. And cancer has been uh, uh, tied to acidity as well. And zamzam is the opposite of that. And there's a lot of magnesium, magnesium in it too. Um, so um, dates, honey, black seed, oil, pomegranates, figs, all of these are in the Quran and they're all beneficial. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that whoever eats t uh, seven ajwa, which we're going to have the chance to have there, will not be affected by any poison or witchcraft that day or any harmnesses or, uh, or ill effects. Ajwa is a date from Jannah. Take advantage of Ajwa. Okay. Next slide. Hijama. You're going to see a lot of people <laughs> coming there with these small red circles uh, on their backs, on their necks, on their heads. Hijama is a great tool. Um, it it is it is um, it is a great healing. I However, we recommend if you're going to do hijama to do it after the the Hajj days, especially the the tenth of Hajj, the Hijjah, or before at least two or three days before. I'll tell you sometimes the the nicks, if especially if you do wet hijama, sometimes they can uh, be still fresh, and so it can get on your clothes and whatnot. But um, otherwise, it's very beneficial, and if you're able to do it, it uh, you should try it at least once in your lifetime. The virtues of the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah, this is just another reminder that, uh, you know, and, and this is part of the health in the sense that, you know, we're going to have the opportunity to do good deeds. Although it's going to be very hot and we don't recommend it and you, we are going to be traveling, uh, but it's okay if you want to try to fast, you know, as long as you're very responsible when it comes to it, because there's no greater deeds that are more righteous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these 10 days, not even jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these days uh, you want to recite the talbiyah, you know, and, and tahleel and, and tahmeed and takbir. Uh, and then inshallah, we pray that Allah grants us a hajj that is accepted. Hajj mabrur. Ameen. All right. I think that's it for us. Uh, inshallah. Um, where are we are ready for Q&A. Uh, So here we have some questions, uh, Dr. Samad. Uh, how do you balance hydrating sufficiently and not having immediate access to the bathrooms? Well, you have to plan your day accordingly. Um, if you are going to go do ibadah acts, then you have to be very careful, right? Uh, before the ibadah acts, you know, at least one to two hours before, hydrate yourself, get some good nutrition in you. And then right before you have to leave, use the bathroom. And then during the ibadah, drink responsibly, you know, especially when it comes to zamzam. 
and then you have an opportunity to do it after. And we'll all be together. And, you know, at worst, ca worst case scenario, you have to, you know, uh, deviate from the uh, the act of worship or tawaf or, or, or sa'i for just, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then you have to come back. It's okay. It happens. Do they have hijama for sisters? Yes, they do. Um, and more information, uh, you can ask your group leader and they can ask Dr. Uh, Sheikh Hasib. He can uh, uh, send us. There's a lot more um, opportunities in Medina than Mecca. There's a lot more opportunities for hijama in Medina than Mecca, especially for sisters. Uh, you're asking about the meningococcal vaccine. Honestly, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Any meningococcal vaccine is fine as long as you have it on paper that you had something related to meningococcal. Um, and if there's any problems, just have a letter written that from your PCP that states uh, you have received the meningococcal vaccine saying this in general on this date and it's valid. That's it. That should be enough for you guys. Uh, regarding fasting, the pro, uh, the Prophet ﷺ didn't fast during Hajj, so shouldn't we follow the Sunnah? Yes, you're absolutely right. He did not mm -hmm. fast during the days of Hajj when it comes to the 8th, 9th, 10th, the 11th, 12th, and 13th as well. Wallahu a'lam. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Who can help me with my medications getting updated? Um, your your primary care doctor. Uh, I would recommend everybody go see the PCP before coming for Hajj. Uh, you know they can prescribe you some antibiotics. Uh, they can give you advice. Uh, give you your you know your medical report, your your updated medications. Um, they can talk to you about you know uh, you know potentially taking medications if you you know if you uh, urinate you know more more often than than most people. Um, there's a question, but I don't know if Dr. B, if you answer the questions about hydrating sufficiently uh, versus uh, having immediate access to the bathrooms. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, you, you don't want to, you know, not drink fluids because you have to go to the bathroom and then all of a sudden you get dehydrated, right? And you end up getting, you know, heat exhaustion and you can't continue. So I would say, you know, you have nowadays uh, access to bathrooms is there uh, for the most part. Um, you know, in Mina and in Bustalifa, there's bathrooms that are amazing there now. In Arafat, I mean, I wouldn't say amazing, but they're there. And and so I wouldn't risk you know uh, not hydrating yourself uh, versus worried, being worried about using the washroom. Question, can we perform more than one animal sacrifice? If so, how do we add more animals? There are services available in Mecca. Uh, I can't remember the names of them. Uh, Dr. Summit, do you remember? Uh, there's we'll, a, there's we'll, we'll, we'll send it out. We have. Yeah, there's there's uh, numbers and, and uh, there's there's a list of people that uh, we can contact if you want to do, like, for example, you have dumb to pay, um, you know, uh, through the government. But even privately, uh, we'll give you a list um, you know, just in case you want to sacrifice another animal, uh, I was able to do so. Uh, you know, just two years back, um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, have another uh, Qurbani done from the line, so I was able to get that uh, just to make sure. Uh, you know, yeah. So those those will be available uh, to us once we arrive. We have another question about Achilles tendonitis. Dr. Summon, you want to do the Achilles tendonitis? Yeah, I mean, so obviously taking certain antibiotics can can make that worse, you know. So so for example, the floxacins can can make that worse. So make sure that you know your your uh, doctor does not you know necessarily prescribe to you that medicine uh, for infections. Um, and then you know otherwise. You know, you, you can wear it. So, you know, people worry about having, you know, proper uh, footwear that, that's, you know, not going to be covering the, the bone. You know, ha having something which uh, a strap, you know, uh, you know, covering your Achilles, that's fine, right? You, you could have that strap and then un undo the strap um, to undo the ankle, ask the ankle bone, 
aspect of that, uh, but you can still, uh, you know, have it so it can protect your, it protect your Achilles, right? Um, so that's something that I would look into. Uh, you have those sandals that have the, you know, that have the ankle straps on them. Um, and that, and that's a way of protecting the Achilles. Even, even wearing a brace, it's okay. You just have to pay a small yeah. penalty, you know, especially when it's a medical necessity, you know, especially if it may prevent you from walking and doing the acts of worship. There's rukhsa there, inshallah. Yeah. Achilles tendonitis is this difficult. Um, taking NSAIDs, right, uh, to, you know, help prevent, you know, if you, if you, if you know you have it, um, you know, the second you develop a flare-up, you know, make sure you start taking some ibuprofen or, or Motrin if necessary. Uh, questions about the meningitis vaccine. Again, a couple of them. One, um, what about pregnancy breastfeeding? Can you get a letter of exemption? I believe so. I have done that before for uh, group members. As long as the letter is official, yes, that, that can work. Uh, I already took the meningitis vaccines from Walgreens. They provided me a receipt. As long as it says your name and that you had the meningitis vaccine, that's okay with the date on it. Date, date. Yeah, yeah. date. Yeah. Need to close. We need to, we need to be done, man. <laughs> the hard food poisoning is coming in, Mina. Should we avoid there? Yes, please. Yeah. Use your intuition. Use your, uh, you know, uh, intellect. You know, obviously, if there's, you know, things that are happening there, you know, and avoid it. And your and your sense of smell as well. You, you can be able to smell spoiled food sometimes. Just, you know, it, it can happen, yeah. inshallah. So. All right, guys, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, we hope to see you guys soon. And if you guys have any questions, please let us know on the group chats. Uh, we are monitoring those. Uh, sometimes we're not able to respond right away, but we will get back to you, inshallah. Jazakallah uh, khair, Dr. Samad. Uh, beautiful presentation. Thank you very much. May Allah bless all of us, inshallah. Uh, any, any, any other questions if you guys have any other questions just go through back through this recording and go through the slides all the information is there it's there for you and you'll be able to read it and understand it it's very easy subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu la ilaha illa nastaghfirullah wa natubu ilayh assalamu alaikum